Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the second review session of the FE. In this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the fluid statics. Right? Fluid statics is being tested in FE mechanical, FE civil, FE environmental, and FE other disciplines as well. Right? And one thing to note is fluid statics is a much more comprehensive topic. So I will be just skimming to the surface as well as focusing on the reference manual. I will go along with what the reference manual says. Um, so, but my opinion is that the reference manual is missing some important equations, so I will explain those to you here in this review as well, okay? Let's start with the first thing. The first thing is the pressure, okay? As you see, pressure is equal to force, normal force, divided by the area the force is acting on, right? So that, that part we know. Another thing is that the pressure is a scalar because of the Pascal laws I showed it in my lecture videos. Okay. And this part is important now. So the pressure, if I go between you and I, the pressure is constant. Okay. If I go in this direction, the pressure is also constant. Okay. And the pressure increases when I go down by rho g h. And in uh, if we review number one, we derive that rho times g is called the specific weight. So basically specific weight times the h. So I increase my pressure like that. Okay. So if I go up, then I reduce my pressure bars by rho g h. Okay. One thing to note over here is it's a rho g h, so rho of the fluid that you're traveling in. Okay. If you're going up or down, and if you cross to another fluid, so you may want to do a two-step process where you analyze the first fluid first with using the density of the first fluid, and then you go to the second one by using the density of the second fluid. So it's a two-step process. And these equations, some of these equations are listed on the page 177 of the reference manual, so you have access to that. One thing to note, and sometimes it comes in in the FE exam, is that, what did I say? Pressure is rho gh. I didn't say anything about the area, so it's independent of the area. It's only a function of the fluid density that I'm traveling in. The g is the gravity, so that's a constant, right, for absolute purposes. And the distance that I travel is the only parameters that affect the pressure. Please note that. Okay. And the other thing about the pressure that we must know, and this is also cited in page 177 in the reference manual, is that there are two types of representing pressure. The first is the absolute pressure. The second is the gauge pressure. Okay. Absolute pressure is pressure measurement with respect to absolute zero, which is called the vacuum. Okay. And the second one is the gauge pressure terminology and the gauge pressure terminology is based on taking my reference as the atmospheric pressure okay and they also include this in the page 177 and what they say is absolute pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure plus the gauge or gauge pressure okay so this information is also covered in the lecture videos but you need to know that because it will come in handy. So the next thing that if we reference manual covers is a concept called manometers. It's a great application of these, what I just talked about, the pressure decreasing, increasing, not changing, okay? Um, the, the if we reference manual has included some formulas, I personally don't think they are extremely helpful to you, okay? Because the concept is fairly simple and here are what you need to do. As we talked about this way, this way, no pressure change, go down, rho gh, if you cross into another fluid, make sure you use them separate and two-step process. And other than that, one more thing is, if my flow is connected by u shape 2, or it can be n shaped as well, as long as I am in the same fluid, there's no change between the fluids, I can go up and down in, within the same fluid, within these u branches, and my pressure will be constant. Okay? That's pretty much what you need to know. And the next axle associated with manometers is the barometer. It's a much simpler device to measure the pressure. So basically what we do is there's an upside down tube that is stuck into a fluid and the fluid goes up, okay? And we just have one simple formula for that. We look, we look at the vapor pressure of the barometric fluid, okay? And then we add up plus rho of the barometric fluid times G times H is equal to atmospheric pressure. So that's pretty much about the barometer, okay? Next is after we calculate the pressure at any point in my um, static uh, fluid, then the next step is to find forces, okay? So the title of this is gonna be the forces on submerged 
plane surfaces, like the exam only concern plane surfaces. Okay. First, start by this. I have 11 videos on this, so in my lecture videos. So it's a very in depth topic. Um, but I'll, I'll summarize it as fast as I can. Okay. First thing is we are going to separate this into three configurations. So, first, let's say that I'm interested in a surface that is horizontal and there's a free surface up there. So, then what will happen is the force on this particular horizontal surface will be the rate of the fluid above this particular surface all the way to the free surface. Or, alternatively, you can use this as you can calculate the average pressure on my horizontal surface and multiply by the area. So, this is uh, fairly um, doable. Okay. Um, the second configuration is this can be a vertical surface. That's a little bit more challenging, but at the end of the day, I will have myself the average pressure on that particular surface times the area. And if you integrate two things together, I'm showing the formula here. What you're going to get is you're going to get this specific weight times h sub c. Okay, h is the height from the free surface, right, in the z, z direction, negative z direction. And C is the centroid of this particular shape, okay, times the area of that shape. Okay? So that would be the best uh, formula for you. Okay? The third configuration um, is that you're responsible for MIFI is basically you have an uh, inclined surface, okay? as opposed to either horizontal or vertical, you know, something in between. So basically I have inclined surface over here. So the formula that I showed you. The only thing that will change over there is this HC, okay? HC, note that it will need to be all the way to the centroid of the shape, okay? But then when I look at if this is the Y direction, then it's going to be Y times sine of theta. Theta is the angle that it makes, okay? So you will see that I'm going to get myself specific weight times YC times sine theta times A. So that's what the FE exam is about when it's talking about the forces. Okay? Um, some of these equations are available in, on page 179 of the reference manual. And the next question, the important question, is where is this force acting? Okay? This is a small hint for you. Typically, you find the centroid of the shape, which is easy to find, much easier to find, then it usually is a little bit about that number. Right? Instead of centroid is at 2.5 meters, you will see that you can eliminate some choices in the FE exam because the center of pressure will be 2.5, a little bit more than that, 2.6, whatever the number is. Okay, so something to note. But there's a formula I'm putting up here. Um, I have not that in my lecture videos as well. This IXC is the moment of inertia about the centroid x axis. And the very last topic in the fluid statics review is the buoyancy, okay? And what we will have in the buoyancy is this. So the buoyant force exerted on a fully submerged or partially submerged object is weight of the displaced, important, displaced fluid, okay? And in case the center of buoyancy is being asked to you, so that will be, as logically, will be the center of that displaced fluid, not the entire, uh, if this is a ship, for instance, if you only look what is underneath water, right? The center of, of that will be the center of buoyancy. So in terms of the topics that you're responsible from, okay, it's much more limited than my lecture videos, as you can see for the FE exam, those are the fundamentals, okay? Um, so I will uh, solve several examples to illustrate um, these cases. So I recommend that you watch those videos as well to practice for the FE exam.